all could attend. But today we have uh, a talk on a very important subject of Anartas. We started this talk a couple of weeks ago, and I don't remember what happened. Somehow it got interrupted and we didn't finish it. So I want to go over this because in our series now, we've been going through the Nectar of Devotion. And we finished the first part of Nectar of Devotion, uh, the first wave, as it's called, from uh, chapter 1 through chapter 19. So Nectar of Devotion. If you haven't read it, you should read it. Or if you haven't got it, you should get it. Uh, we have it in our Veda base. If you want to download the Veda base, you should read it and look at these uh, chapters 1 through 19. They describe the whole first part of the path of devotion. Actually, they just, it, it summarizes the whole path, but it gives special attention to the beginning of the path because, of course, most devotees are in the beginning. Uh, once a devotee actually becomes advanced, then they, they move very quickly. But the place where most devotees get stuck is on Anartha Nivriti. Remember, there's three stages. What's the first stage? Adao Shraddha, faith. Somehow, someone hears about spiritual life or they hear about the Vedas or something like that, and they get a little faith. That's all it takes. It doesn't take a whole lot of faith. It doesn't, we don't ask for complete faith. We ask for just a little bit of faith. And if you try the process that's given in the Vedas, you'll find that it works. It does what it says it's going to do. It will change your consciousness from material to spiritual consciousness. And you'll get bliss, relief from material anxieties and suffering, and so many other results from just a little bit of practice. And then that should uh, confirm that this process is bona fide. You do the experiment, you get the result. OK. So from that point, it's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of experience, of knowledge, confidence. So uh, according to this confidence, then we take up the next step, which is sadhu sangha, association with devotees. Huh? And this is what we have here. We have a sangha of sadhus. Uh, sadhu means someone who's expert. And it also means someone who cuts. They're expert because they have reached the highest platform of human life, uh, where they are uh, endeavoring to understand spiritual things. And they are, they're cutting because what? They're cutting off their material attachment and just associating with people who are similarly engaged in spiritual life. This is sadhu. So sadhu sangha means association with sadhus. If we keep company with sadhus, then we become like sadhus. Uh, it's said a man is known by the company that he keeps. So if we keep company with rascals, we become like rascals. But if we keep company with enlightened souls, then we become like them. So that is the, uh, the means of advancement in the very beginning of the path. But then what happens? If you associate with sadhus, pretty soon you're going to meet a spiritual master because sadhus are always associated with a spiritual master. And then you have the opportunity to take initiation. An initiation means that you follow the instructions given in the scriptures. Because if a spiritual master is bona fide, he's going to say, these are the instructions given in the scriptures. Huh? And these three things will agree. Sadhus, gurus, and shastra. Huh? The devotees, the spiritual master, and the scriptures. They all say the same thing. They all say that you should detach yourself from material things, and you should attach yourself to Krishna. 
always hear and chant about his holy name, his beautiful transcendental form, his wonderful activities and pastimes with his devotees, his amazing spiritual qualities, and so forth. That this is the essence of all advice. This is the essence of all instruction. So if one follows this instruction, then part of that instruction is to take initiation, diksha. And we're going to have an initiation ceremony on Janmashtami, Krishna's birthday, which is coming up uh, in about a month. And uh, that's going to be in New Jersey. And of course, we're going to stream it on, uh, it's going to be a, our, a Sunday satsang for that day. What is that? Uh, August 15th? Yeah. 16th? Yeah. So be sure and uh, make it to that Sunday satsang. That's going to be real special. And uh, the meaning of initiation is not just a ceremony. It's not simply getting a name. It's not just uh, going through or some ritual and, you know, it's a very colorful ritual. It's really cool. You know, we have a fire and we make different offerings into the fire and there's all these mantras and, it, you know, it's a very nice ceremony. But what happens when the ceremony is over? Is that the end of the initiation? No. No. Really, initiation means the beginning. To initiate something is to start something. What are we starting? We're starting that we follow these rules and regulations in the scriptures in a, a committed way, in a steady way. It's not just a hobby anymore. This is a serious thing. It's a lifestyle. Uh -huh. So when one follows these rules and regulations, what's the result? Anartha nivriti. Anartha means unwanted things. Artha means wealth. Huh? There's four objects in the Vedic culture. Uh, dharma, which means religiousness. Artha, which means wealth. Kama, which means enjoyment. And moksha, which means final liberation. So artha means wealth. Anartha means the opposite of wealth. It means a debt or a demerit or a, a, a bad quality, huh? something you, you don't want. So anartha nivriti is the stage at which all these bad things go away. All the person's bad qualities are eliminated and they have only good qualities, which means that all of their time, energy, intention, work, all their qualities become spiritual. Spiritual means in relation with Krishna. So, uh, anartha nivriti is a very important stage in the development of devotional service. Yeah, turn down the room ambient uh, sound. It's raining really hard. It means that all of a person's bad qualities go away. Anartha nivriti. And this is where we see that most devotees get stuck. We know devotees who've been chanting the holy name for 20, 30 years or more, and they are still not at this stage of an art nivriti. Yeah, they've taken initiation from a bona fide spiritual master. Yeah, they've been chanting the holy name for so long. And even so, they're not getting past an art nivriti to the stage of steadiness. That's the next thing. After all these bad qualities go away, then the next stage is? Huh? Nishta. Nishta means steadiness. Steadiness. If someone is steady in devotional service, it means they don't fall down. They don't become involved in material activities again. They don't... Uh, desire material enjoyment anymore because they have a source of spiritual enjoyment that is far superior. Huh? So they don't need these material things. So why is it then that the devotees are not attaining anartha nivriti? Why is it that our god brothers, for example, they keep falling down, they keep having spiritual problems? Huh? Why is that? Well, it could be that for one thing, they don't know enough about anartha nivriti. You'll find that this nectar of devotion that we've been studying is not very well known in the temples. You go around to the different temples 
you'll find that the people aren't studying it. They're not lecturing from it. They're not reading it. They're not knowledgeable in these things. So how are you going to attain an art in Ivriti if you don't know what the anarthas are? Huh? If you don't know that something is undesirable, if you don't know that it's going to lead you into a condition of poverty where you lose all your spiritual credits, then you won't know that, oh, this is something I ought to give up. You might even think that it's a good quality. Huh? But actually, it's, a, it's an albatross around your neck. It's a, it's a bag of rocks. Huh? And until you put your bag of rocks down, you can't receive the diamonds of higher stages of devotional service, like attachment for Krishna, ecstatic emotions, and pure love of Godhead. Huh? These are the higher stages on the path of devotional service. Until you get past this stage of anartha nivritti, 